It has been termed as the greatest environmental risk to human health. Yet sometimes you can't even see it. But air pollution is everywhere and threatens all of us. It's actually costing the global economy what 5 trillion US dollars. And what this tells us is that if you look at this amount, it's actually the economy of all 54 African countries combined. You're talking roughly about 7.6 billion for each and every country. According to the World Health Organization report of 2018, nine out of 10 people around the world breathe polluted air. An alarming seven million people die each year from air pollution, the report said, as air pollution levels remain dangerously high in many parts of the world. Whereas air pollution affects the rest of the world, the report says that nine out of 10 of pollution-related deaths occur in low and middle income countries mainly in Africa and Asia. 620 million Africans are energy impoverished. And also because of the low socioeconomic aspects that these people face. They are depending on charcoal, they are depending on kerosene, and they do not have the opportunities to be able to afford alternatives like clean energy that can be able to power their indoor activities. In Kenya, according to the 2016 report on the cost of air pollution in Africa by Dr. Rana Roy, air pollution causes an average of 19,000 deaths each year. Such disturbing statistics are what drove a group of young environmentally minded entrepreneurs with interest in green energy to set up an electric vehicle conversion company in Nairobi. This in a bid to reduce carbon emission in line with the UN Sustainable Development Goal number 13 of climate action. Shared passion and interest in environmental issues brought these university students together and Opibus was founded. We have 1.2 billion vehicles uh, that is fossil fuel driven today and we need to transition our transport sector. What would be the easiest way? to convert a portion of those vehicles or to manufacture 1.2 billion new vehicles. Conversion takes the, takes the winning straw there. The conversion process turns the traditional internal combustion engine vehicles into electric vehicles by exchanging the drivetrain. Components in the existing drivetrains such as the combustion engine and fuel tanks are removed to make room for electric motor batteries and power electronics. Functionalities such as power steering, four-wheel drive and driving in shallow water are retained. We install our modular boxes and drivetrains. So what we do is we just lower down actually our pre-assembled box with power electronics, batteries, etc. as well as install other battery packs in different places of the car. After that, the vehicle is more or less fully electric, and this is a process that can be done in as short as one day's time. This design part of it, if you want to make a mount, probably you have to design, you have to come up with the dimensions you want. You have to know or the type of material you want the mount to hold. So you will have to design the mount, you will have to do stress analysis for that mount to see whether the, the type of load applied on the, on the material will be able to break the load. The, the, the mount. So you, there's the design and then there's the fabrication. You, you cut the sheet metal, you drill the holes, you mount it on the car. Founded in the year 2017, Opibus's initial focus has been on the conversion of off-road safari vehicles, but the company is now engaging a higher gear to bring change where the real mess is. The public transport also known as the Matatu sector. Nairobi's air pollution is vivid in the city's congested streets with personal cars, trucks and motorcycles popularly known here as Boda Boda, jostling for space while belching clouds of black smoke into the air, literally shrouding the city to a smog. This is what Opibus is seeking to solve. 
So the Matata industry has a huge potential because they're driving on predetermined routes. They're often starting from point A, driving to point B, and then they're turning around and driving back to point A. What this creates is huge opportunities for electric mobility, meaning that you can place a fast charger in point A, a fast charger in point B. So when they stop to turn around, they actually charge a vehicle in a very short amount of time, meaning that they have enough power to drive back to point A and then do the same circuit and repeat that for a very long time. The converted vehicles, which runs quietly at speeds of over 120 kilometers per hour with no emissions, can be charged at charging stations that Opibuzz is installing. We have a competence of uh, knowledge of installing different types of electric vehicle chargers and different powers. So that means that the slowest charges we can do, we can charge a vehicle in about 1.5 to 2 hours, while the faster ones go down to maybe half an hour or even 20 minutes charging time. Actually, a lot of the customers we have, especially in terms of the off-road vehicles we're deploying, they are based in the off-road. That means that they are relying on energy from the sun to actually charge their vehicles. So what we do in those cases is that we do our own solar energy systems that then are connected to a stationary battery storage bank that is then powering a charging station and charging the vehicle. So no matter where you are, you actually have the ability to use electric vehicles. The conversion promises customers a steep drop in their motoring expenses along with zero carbon emission and pollution. So if you compare the traditional fossil fuel, either diesel or petrol engine with an electrical system, the diesel or fossil fuel powered system will be is very, very complex. You have around 2,000 moving parts that create a highly uh, maintained system where you need to put a lot of effort into maintaining that and changing parts, changing oil, filters, different spare parts that are broken down. The electrical system is very, very simple where you actually only have one moving part, which is the electrical motor that is rotating. You will have massive savings and those savings are uh, because you charge the vehicle with electricity, which is significantly cheaper than filling it up with fuel, uh, diesel or petrol. So that means on average, uh, you see that you save approximately 80%. Vehicles with diesel engines are noisy and vibrate a lot, causing wear and tear. But with electric powered engines, the noise and vibration produced is minimal, which means less wear and tear. This benefits both the driver and the owner of the vehicle. The Swedish company is building a local team of young innovators drawn from diverse disciplines such as engineering and design as it sets its eye on the sub-Saharan region. Within our country we produce engineers. We have graduates who graduate every year from universities. But uh, at the end of it, you find all these engineering projects, most of them, we outsource knowledge from outside. While practically the people who graduate from our country can do the same. So it's a good industry and it uh, provides, it makes us utilize the knowledge we get from school. World Bank's International Finance Corporation estimates that Nairobi's electric car market currently in its infancy, will hit 5 billion US dollars by the year 2030. This presents a huge opportunity for entrepreneurs and investors. There are absolutely opportunities for entrepreneurs to step in and, and actually start mounting up charging infrastructure. For example, these could be implemented in places as malls, in offices, even your house. So residential overnight charges can be a big opportunity if you have an electric vehicle. Everyone from governments to individuals of all ages and abilities can play an important role as stewards of environment. One of the initiatives that UNEP has been focusing on is called Clean Mobility. And the Clean Mobility initiative is actually driving policy to ensure that clean transport uh, policies can be uptake by governments and countries across the entire continent. And this is already proving huge results. Uh, working with member states, including Kenya here, especially in the East African community. They have actually worked with them to come up with a harmonized um, and soulful uh, standard whereby countries are adopting it to ensure that there are certain levels that transport systems cannot be able to go above when it comes to sulfur. And this is being uptaked by the East African community and many countries will do so across the entire African continent. While these green entrepreneurs have created a big economic opportunity to make money, they remain true to their passion.
conserving the environment. We can fix a lot of social problems together with climate change. We can fix a lot of health issues together with climate change because climate change is in the end and inevitably it is a question about health. It is a question about the human beings uh, welfare and that means that if we solve climate change we have we actually have a planet that we can live on and we can solve the remaining problems if we solve the remaining problems and don't uh, don't solve climate change we won't have a planet to to be on